Okay, this tute is to show you how to use nonlinear regression to calculate an EC50 or an EC10 value from a sigmoid dose response curve or concentration effect curve. Now, there are other methods to linearize the data, so you can use linear regression like probate or logit or oxine transformation that then allow you to use simple linear methods to calculate these things. But what I want to show you is it's actually quite easy in Excel to do nonlinear regression, and we'll, we'll do nonlinear regression here using an approach called least square regression. Um, here's an example of some, some bioassay data. This is an IPAM. Um, it's a, an assay that looks at photosynthesis inhibition. This is diuron concentration. This is a herbicide in micromolar, decreasing diuron concentration in micromolar. And here's the photosynthesis 2 inhibition as a percent. So 99% inhibited at 0.2 and only 6.5 inhibited at this lower concentration here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll plot that on a scatter graph so that I can see what I'm looking at. Grab the X data, the diron concentration on the X axis, and the photosynthesis inhibition on the Y axis. And you get this pretty typical um, uh, flattened sigmoid dose response curve. Flattened because, of course, I'm, I'm, this is not on a log scale. So the first thing I'll have to do is transform this X axis to a log axis so that I can uh, actually see this uh, axis um, on the sigmoid curve. I'll calculate it because I will actually need these values uh, I'll need these values now, so I'll calculate it now. So log of diron here equals to log of the diron concentration on a base 10, and drag it down here. So this is my log value, so I can just now click on my data and slide it across to show I want to plot the log diron. So here I get this nice little S-shaped curve uh, if I plot the photosynthesis inhibition versus the log of my concentration. I'm going to add my axes just as a as a as a normal good approach to science. So this here is diron concentration, a log of micromolar, and on my other axis is the percent PS2 PS2 inhibition. Okay. So to for the nonlinear regression, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fit a curve to this data, and a very famous curve for this kind of data, a very useful curve, is something called the, the Hill equation here. Um, it, you'll see it calculates a y value, so a percent inhibition, from the log x of my concentration, and using four other parameters, the minimum of the curve, the maximum of the curve, the log EC50, the point of inflection basically, and the slope of the curve. So to be able to fit that in Excel, I'll need a little box here where I'll, I'll set my hill slope parameters. And so remember, I'll have uh, min, max, log EC50, no, no, log EC50, and the slope. Uh, so min in this case is always going to be 0%. My, my lowest possible effect will be 0% in this assay. My highest possible effect is 100% in this assay. Slope, a good starting point is 1, and, and the software will figure it out for you, but it's always nice to give it a starting point. And likewise here, the EC50, if I had to eyeball it, I'd say it's probably somewhere here, uh, minus 1.6, but again, the computer will calculate it for you. Um, to be able to do that, so once I have these four parameters, I can now, using this equation, calculate the predicted, a predicted uh, percent inhibition, right? Using that equation, so equals to minimum plus maximum minus minimum um, divided by 1 plus 10 to the power of uh, log EC50 minus log of x, which is my log of diuron concentration here, times the slope, and then close bracket. Uh, and I need to close the bracket twice, which this guy has figured out. Thank you. Uh, now, if I simply drag this down, it's going to drag all of my other figures as well, and it's going to create some real problems. So what I need, see how it's dragged down all of the other parameters as well. I want these to be fixed. So when you come back here, basically you want to fix K9, K10, K11, and K12. You just click on the field and press F4, and it'll add anchors around it to fix it. So that's what I'm doing now. All the K parameters, I'm going in and fixing them, and then press Enter. And then you can finally come back in and drag it down. Uh, so here is now the predicted y value. Now to fit this in Excel, I'm also going to need a column called squared residual, SR. And the squared residual is simply 
the predicted value minus the actual value squared. Okay, so that, that's a, the difference between the two points. This is why it's called the least square method. Because what I'm trying to do now is I will have the sum of squared residual, which is the sum of these, the sum of all my squared residuals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the computer play around with these numbers to make this sum of squared residual as small as possible, which is basically meaning that it will try to make the predicted y as close to the actual y as possible. Now, to do that, you need an add-in solver, uh, sorry, an add-in called solver. So make sure you have it. You go File, Options, um, Add-ins, Excel add-ins, click on Go, and make sure that the solver add-in has been ticked, or if it hasn't, click it now. Um, just to see this in action, I will now plot this data on the same graph as well so that we can see it. So I'll go back in here, Design, Select Data, add, this is going to be my predicted values with my log, x for predicted, and my actual y predicted value at the moment. It shouldn't fit perfectly. Now, see, at the moment, it doesn't fit very well. Um, just for clarity's sake, I'm going, to, I'm going to delete these points and transform them into a line. So how do I do that again? Come here, marker, no line, yes smoothed, let's say orange. For some reason, I like orange to predict. So here's my orange prediction line, and here's my blue actual data set. Now, using uh, Solver, I'm going to go uh, to view Solver. You go to Data, and then it'll have added this Solver add-in once you've clicked on it. So just click on Solver. And then what you want to do is you want to set this, so K14, to be the minimum possible by changing you could change all four, but to be honest, min and max should be fixed to 0 100 for this assay. So we're going to keep those two by just changing the log EC50 and the slope. Make sure you untick this, make, constrain, un, make unconstrained variables non-negative. Just unclick that, otherwise it'll screw things up. So here's what I'm doing. I'm setting K14, my sum of squared residuals, to be as small as possible by changing these two values here. And then you click on Solve. And that'll bring up a dialog like this one, where it asks you, you want to keep solver, do you want to try again? Generally, it works really well. See how well this orange predicted line now fits my actual data? So solver has managed to come up with really good options for log EC50 and slope that fit this data. Great, that was very quickly done. So what is my EC50 now? Here it is. It's actually one of the parameters of my hill slope equation. It's minus 1.66. Now remember, this is a log scale. Whenever you're expressing anything in your uh, values, you probably want to give the unlogged value, right? So to go from a log scale to the natural value, if it's on a base 10, you just write 10 to the power of this value here. And so here is the Diron EC50 in micromolar, 0.021. Now, if you wanted to calculate the EC10 as well, you can also do this based on these parameters here. Uh, because, of course, you can extrapolate it from the line. Here's the equation uh, to calculate that. So if I wanted, say, EC10, I would just, using this equation up here, is equal to, okay, log EC50 minus the log of max minus min divided by x, so x being the ECX, so in this case 10, 10 minus min minus 1 divided by the slope. There. So here's my, oh sorry, this is a log, of course, log y value at EC10. I should probably move it to the log, log, log column, otherwise it's going to confuse everyone. But here's this value. Here's my EC10. This is basically saying that to reach 10%, I am at an x value of minus 2.2 on a log scale. Again, to get this value uh, in a natural scale, it's just EC10 equals to 10 to the power of this number here. And here's the EC10 for this assay, 0 0.005 a micromolar. Um, I think that's it. So this is how you use Solver to calculate EC50 and EC10 from a, a nonlinear curve.